Hi there. Welcome to Southbrook Kids Church. I'm glad you're here with us today. I'm Pastor Helen, and today is the last week of our Subscribe Now series, all about challenges. So we started the month with our big idea that said Jesus takes care of us. Remember, Jesus healed people. He took good care of people while he was here on earth, and he still takes good care of us. The next Sunday was Jesus shows us the truth. And he took the three disciples up on the mountain and showed them his glory. He was transfigured, and they saw what Jesus looked like as God. Last Sunday, we looked at the temptations of Jesus. And our big idea was Jesus helps us when we are tempted. This week, our big idea is Jesus understands my challenges. Do you know what a challenge is? Hmm. Has anybody ever challenged you to a game of checkers? Or have you been challenged to do your very best at something? Or have you been challenged by a test at school? To be challenged means to be invited or called to take part in a championship or a contest of some sort, or a competition. So we are going to learn about all kinds of challenges that Jesus can help us with. Let's read from the Bible. We're going to read from Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 31. Mark 8, 31. Go ahead, pause it, and get your Bible, and then we'll read together. The title of this section in my Bible is Jesus Predicts His Death. Do you know what a prediction is? I might look out the window and say, hmm, I predict that it's going to rain today. Or we might say, I predict that the Bucks are going to win this game tonight. A prediction is suggesting that we might know what's going to happen in the future. It's a guess. But when Jesus predicts, he doesn't guess. He knows. So Mark 8, 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So let's let's look at that. Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he calls himself the Son of Man. That's another name for Jesus. And he said he was going to have to suffer by the from the leaders of their people, and that he was going to be killed, but then after three days he was going to rise again. Wow. This was some amazing prediction. How do you think you would have felt if you were one of the disciples and Jesus said that he was going to suffer and die and then come back to life again? Would you have been surprised? Yeah, that's an amazing prediction. And the disciples knew Jesus well enough that they knew he would not lie to them. Let's see what happens next. So he spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. To rebuke somebody means to say, that's not right. Peter said this to Jesus. Then, verse 33, But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns. Hmm. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. To Peter. Was he calling Peter Satan? I think what he was saying is that Peter was being controlled at that moment by, by Satan. That Peter was only thinking about what would be best for Peter. He was not thinking about what would be best for everyone in the whole world. Jesus helped the disciples to understand that 
following God's way is what we all should try to do. That sometimes following God is not easy, but it's always the best way. It's a challenge that we might have to take on over and over in our lives. But when we follow God, we know that he is there to help us. And Jesus understands that it's a challenge. And he will help us to win that challenge. Let's see if you are listening. Why do you think Jesus had to die? Jesus died for our sins, didn't he? He had to die so that we could be forgiven and have eternal life. And what did Jesus say that his followers would have to do? We have to obey God, right? We have to follow the plan that he has for our lives. Even if it is difficult, we still have to obey God. So in verse 33, it says, You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. What do you think Jesus meant by that when he told Peter that he did not have in mind the things of God? Peter didn't want his friend to die, right? Peter liked being with Jesus. Peter wanted Jesus to continue to teach them and to be with them and to heal people. And so Peter was thinking only about what would be good at that moment. But Jesus knew that if he died for our sin, that then we would be healed forever from our sin and we could live in peace and harmony with God. That's thinking about the things of God. Do you think it was hard for Jesus to tell his disciples that he was going to die? I think he was probably sad that he was going to leave them. I think he was very sad that he was going to have to suffer. But he didn't change his mind. He followed the plan that God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit had decided from the beginning of earth, and that he would follow that plan. I have a challenge for you. Do you know anybody who's going through a challenging time? Sometimes our older relatives can't leave their homes. They have to stay inside and they can't see anybody because of COVID. That would be a challenge, right? Some of our friends might be having trouble with school being online. That would be a challenge. Maybe some of your friends are sick, or maybe you know somebody who is very sad because they know somebody who has died. What could you do to help these people? We know that Jesus understands our challenges, and he also asks us to understand the challenges that our friends are going through. Maybe you could write a note to somebody that is going through a hard challenge right now. Or maybe you could call somebody. Maybe, if you're able to, you could go and visit somebody who's lonesome and just stand outside and wave. There are many things that we can do to help our friends and our neighbors and our relatives, our family, to go through hard times. But the most important thing to remember is that when we go through challenges, Jesus is with us, and he will encourage us and help us and always be there with us. That's some good news. Remember, Jesus understands my challenges. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus, and Jesus, thank you so much for being willing to go through the plan to die for our sin and then to live again so that we can live with you forever. I ask that you would help us this week to see other people who are going through challenges and try to be helpful to them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, everyone. I hope you have a great week. Hi, kids. Burr, it is so cold out there. It gives us some time to stay home and maybe have some hot chocolate and learn our memory verse. Which brings me to February's memory verse. 
it's found in the letter of 1st John. 1st John 5 5. Who is it that has won the battle over the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. 1st John 5 5.